Healthy soils improve plant growth by enhancing plant nutrition. Plants obtain most of their water and minerals from upper layers of soil. Soil particles are classified by size. From largest to smallest, they are called sand, silt, and clay. Soil is stratified into layers called soil horizons. The outermost layer, known as topsoil, consists of inorganic components such as potassium, calcium, and magnesium cations that stick to negatively charged soil particles. This adhering of cations prevent them from leaching out of the soil through percolating groundwater. The organic component is known as humus, which consists of living organisms including bacteria, fungi, algae, and other protists, insects, earthworms, nematodes, and plant roots. These organisms help to decompose organic material and mix the soil. Humus also builds a crumbly soil that retains water but is still porous. Loams are the most fertile topsoil that contains equal amounts of sand, silt, and clay. Plant root hair uptake minerals from the cation exchange mechanism. First, the root hair releases carbon dioxide and protons. Carbon dioxide combines with water to form carbonic acid, which further increases the proton concentration. Protons then binds to the negatively charged soil particle, displacing the bound cations, which are now available for root hairs. Agricultural practices deplete mineral contents of soil. Fertilization replaces mineral nutrients that have been lost from the soil. Commercial fertilizers are enriched in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, whereas organic fertilizers are composed of manure or compost. Irrigation is a huge drain on water resources when used for farming in arid regions. The primary source of irrigation water is underground water reserves known as aquifers. The depleting aquifers can result in subsidence, the settling or sinking of land. Irrigation can also lead to salinization which is the increase of concentration of salts in soil as water evaporates. Topsoil from farmland can also be lost to water and wind erosion, which causes loss of nutrients. Erosion can be reduced by terracing hillside crops, cultivating in a contour pattern, planting trees as windbreaks, and practicing no-till agriculture. Soil compaction from heavy equipment reduces pore space between soil particles. Soil compaction slows gas exchange and reduces root growth. Some areas are unfit for agriculture because of contamination of soil or groundwater with toxic pollutants. Phytoremediation is a biological non-destructive technology that reclaims contaminated areas, such as plants capable of extracting soil pollutants. Plants require 9 macronutrients in relatively large amounts, which are carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen are the major components of plants' organic compounds. Nitrogen and magnesium are the major components of plants' chlorophyll, which functions in photosynthesis. Calcium cation is important in the formation and stability of cell walls and the maintenance of membrane structure and permeability. It is also central to many signal transduction pathways. Potassium cation plays an important role in stomatal regulation which have been covered in my previous video about plant transport. Nitrogen and sulfur are important components of proteins, and nitrogen and phosphorus are important components of nucleic acids. And lastly, nitrogen, potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and sulfur can function as cofactors. Plants also require 8 micronutrients in very small amounts, which are chlorine, iron, manganese, boron, zinc, copper, nickel, and molybdenum. Chlorine, iron, and manganese serves as cofactors for photosynthetic reactions. Iron, boron, and zinc are cofactors in chlorophyll synthesis. Boron also plays a role in cell wall functions. Iron, nickel, and molybdenum play a role in nitrogen metabolism. Chlorine plays a role in water balance, and copper is an important component of many redox and lignin biosynthetic enzymes. Lastly, manganese is active in the formation of amino acids. Symptoms of mineral deficiency depend on the nutrient's function and mobility within the plant. Deficiency of a mobile nutrient usually affects older organs more than younger ones, whereas deficiency of a less mobile nutrient usually affects younger organs more than older ones. The most common deficiencies are those of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Nitrogen deficiency will lead to chlorosis or yellowing at the tip of older leaves. Phosphate deficiency will lead to purpling of veins and poor flowering and fruiting. Magnesium deficiency will lead to chlorosis between veins of older leaves. Calcium deficiency will lead to crinkling of younger leaves and death of terminal buds. Potassium deficiency will lead to molding of older leaves, weak stems, and poorly developed roots. 
Deficiency in carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen will lead to poor growth. Plants and soil microbes have a mutualistic relationship. The layer of soil bound to the plant's roots is rhizosphere, which contains high microbial activity because of sugars, amino acids, and organic acids secreted by roots. Free living rhizobacteria thrive in rhizosphere, and some can enter roots. Rhizobacteria can produce hormones that stimulate plant growth, antibiotics that protect roots from disease, absorb toxin metals, and plays an important role in the nitrogen cycle, such as in the mutualistic relationship between legume and rhizobium bacteria, which fixes atmosphere nitrogen into ammonium ion and nitrate that are usable by plants. Lastly, mycorrhizae refers to a mutualistic association of fungi and roots. The fungus benefits from a steady supply of sugar from the host plant, whereas the host plant benefits because the fungus increases the surface area for water uptake and mineral absorption. The two types of mycorrhizae, endomycorrhizae, which penetrate plant root cell wall, and ectomycorrhizae, which doesn't penetrate plant cell wall, have been covered in my previous video titled Fungi. Finally, some plants have nutritional adaptation that use other organisms in non-mutualistic ways. Epiphyte plant grows on another plant and obtains water and minerals from rain. It is known as commensalism, that neither harm or benefit the host plants. On the other hand, parasitic plants absorb sugars and minerals from their living host plants. Example includes mistletoe, which is a photosynthetic parasite, and daughter, which is a non-photosynthetic parasite.